Here it is. Where are the hotspot suburbs in Perth? It's probably the number one question that most people ask me. I've had a few of you comment below asking me where exactly in Perth should I be looking to buy considering it is such a hot place to invest this year. Well, I was a little bit hesitant actually posting this video because the truth is I am a buyer's agent and I do get paid to research different areas and help clients find properties. But considering you've asked nicely, I thought, look, I may as well share the process that I follow and give you some insight to hopefully give you a little bit of help on your property investing journey. Before we dive in and talk about suburbs of Perth, I wanna firstly talk about why investors are talking about Perth. Why is it that Perth is considered a hot place to invest this year? Well, firstly, the median house price is actually uh, the lowest amongst all the major capital cities. It's incredibly affordable. The incomes of the households here are the second highest in the country and the house prices simply haven't caught up. The other thing is there is such a huge shortage of rental properties. The vacancy rates are anywhere from 0.4 to 0.6%. Some suburbs literally have no properties to rent whatsoever. So there's such a shortage of properties, yet the population is growing. There's people moving from interstate. There's international people that are moving to Perth because of the affordability. So let's dive in and talk about where are the hotspot suburbs. And the first question I always ask when people ask this question is, all right, so what's your budget and what are your goals? Because depending on your budget, that's gonna to help determine the suburbs that firstly you can afford, but are also gonna give you the best results over time. So let's start with your budget. And what I'm finding is a lot of people that are buying investment properties in Perth, their budget is typically 450,000 through to 600,000, which is a really good amount to get started in the Perth market. And that's gonna give you a property that's typically a three or four bedroom standalone house in a relatively good suburb that's gonna give you some great prospects for growth. So now we have an understanding of what your budget is. What is your goal? Is cash flow really important to you? Do you need the money coming in and covering all your expenses? Or are you more going for that growth that you, you'll see the, the returns from that property in the growth in the asset over time? And the reason I ask this is because some suburbs do have much better cash flow, but not as strong growth, whereas some suburbs offer really great growth, but not as good cash flow. So that's a really important factor that you need to consider when deciding where to buy, um, because the, the location is really going to uh, dictate what result you're going to get. And so we can look at historicals. Historicals are obviously a guide, and uh, they're not necessarily gonna predict what's gonna happen in the future, but if we look at the fundamentals of a particular suburb, we can see what's likely going to produce for you in the future. What I want to do now is I actually want to bring up a map of Perth and I'm going to show you some areas that there is some investor activity going on. Find you some of those suburbs where anywhere from 450 to 600, you can actually bag yourself a three or four bedroom house. In case you're wondering, I'm actually right here, almost smack bang in the middle of uh, the Perth uh, area um, here in Fremantle. And you can see that Perth actually goes as high up here as Butler and then all the way down here towards Rockingham, um, even down a little bit further uh, down here. I'm going to talk about this area in a moment because there's a lot of investor activity down here. But let's take a look uh, very briefly. This here, the western suburbs of Perth, they're kind of the, the upmarket areas, quite uh higher priced properties over there. You've got the city located just here along the banks of the Swan River. And you can see that Perth is really divided north of the river and south of the river. And often people that live here, they, they're kind of fairly loyal to the northern suburbs or the southern suburbs. And uh, both areas have incredibly uh, great facilities and benefits and pros and cons to both of them. But really Perth is a really beautiful city. The beauty is there's no toll roads as well. So there's a really good network of freeways that go all the way through uh, up and down Perth, which make getting around the city really quite easily. So let's look at some of those hotspot suburbs where you can pick up properties anywhere from 450 to 600. I'm gonna start down the South area because if you've been reading any of the uh, hot spot magazines or looking at online forums, there is a lot of investor activity down this way just here. So this is Rockingham, which is south of Perth. It's about 45 minute drive from the city, depending on traffic up the freeway. Um, but down here, it kind of used to be a little bit like a coastal town. And as 
Perth has grown. It's become really a suburb of Perth. And uh, yeah, it's the beach here is really quite stunning. The things that go on down here, just here you've got Garden Island, which is a big naval base. They've also announced a huge project to bring the submarine base here as well. So there's going to be a lot of money spent down in this region. Um, there's also some really big ports going on at Banana just here. So they're building new ports, uh, which is going to provide a lot of employment, both in construction and when it's uh, completed. So uh, currently the ports are located in Fremantle, but they're really building up this new big port. So it has easier access to get around WA because Fremantle is almost like, almost like, you know, right in a suburban area. So they're building this new port, which will be really good for the city. You can pick up a four bedroom house for around between 400 to 450. Some suburbs are better than others. And I guess it really does pay to go down to the area and really experience what it's like. Generally, the beachside areas are more expensive than the, the inland uh, areas, which I guess is quite common for the rest of the country. Um, but some of the areas that are really popular for investors at the moment are Safety Bay, Waikiki, Wombro and Port Kennedy. So this area just here, it's very family orientated, a lot of houses, um, some areas are more newer than others and also some relatively good schools as well. So given that it's really affordable, there's been a huge amount of investor activity. So house prices have grown significantly and I do some work down there and I speak to real estate agents and they're literally getting like 10 to 15 offers on a property. And as soon as a property comes up online, interstate investors are literally pouncing on them. And they're often putting in offers without even inspecting the property, which does actually freak the real estate agents out. <laughs> um, but I'm just kind of putting into perspective that there's a lot of demand down here at the moment. So it is a affordable place to live, but we just need to note that it is becoming, I guess, more investor lenient or more investors than owner op. So something just to be aware of that as the higher number of investment properties down there compared to owner op, it is a little bit of a risk. So always look at the data for that um, to make sure that you're not buying in suburbs where it's solely investors, because if conditions change, then you might find the value of your, pro your property might not actually move much or could actually go backwards. Um, but yeah, some really great suburbs down here. But just note, there's a lot of competition. So if you find a property, you might have to pay over the asking price. And I'm talking $10,000, $20,000, dollars over the asking price. There's not really many bargains to be had. Um, so just be conscious down there. There's also the suburb Baldivis. This is a huge suburb, a lot of new uh, properties through there. And there's a lot of development as well. And one of the advantages of buying a new property at the moment is the house price construction costs have gone up significantly. So the cost to actually build a new property is much, much higher than what it was when these houses were built. So um, to build a house that's, I guess, a few years newer, it's going to cost you like $100,000 more than these already established properties. So there is some good buying in here. But I just want you to be conscious that there is still quite a little bit of land. So the, the risk you have is that more properties will come available, which could actually stagnate your growth. But having said that, there's a huge demand for rentals, uh, vacancy rate, tiny, like 0.4 4 to 0.5%. Um, so yeah, if you do have a property there, you'll likely get some uh, some good tenants and, and get a good rental yield through there. So that's Baldivis. And as we move closer into the city, all of these areas here, again, you can buy properties for 450 to 600. Um, just, I guess, be conscious that some of those suburbs are less desirable than others. They might be a little bit older or they might actually have some social issues. So just be really conscious of that. As we get into the closer to the city, um, we have the Coburn Council area, which is all around here. Coburn Central is basically the, the town centre. There's a big shopping centre there and a train that connects you into the city. And some of these new suburbs like Success and Atwell over here um, provide some good value. But again, just be conscious that there is some land and there is more development going on. But of course, construction costs are a lot higher. As we move closer in towards Fremantle, Fremantle is very desirable. Um, houses generally $1 million plus. 
a lot of apartments as well in Fremantle, but the beach and this area here is quite a desirable place to live. So some of the suburbs in this area are also quite popular, uh, mainly for owner op. The investors haven't really caught on to this area as much, which means there's a huge shortage of rentals and you can get some reasonably good yields. The yields here are not as good as what they are down south, but if you're looking for the capital growth, then this is where you're more likely to um, achieve better capital growth, given its proximity to the city and also the desirability being close to Fremantle and some of the popular beaches along here. So some of the suburbs to look out for, South Lake, I was buying there last year. You could pick up a four bedroom for about 460,000. You're now looking at about 500,000. So there has been growth from what I've observed. You've got South Lake, Yanjabup over in this area here. Bibber Lake's a little bit dearer and that's more of the $700,000 mark. Um, but then also Coolbull up over here, median is around 560,000. Generally they're older style properties, so the rental yields won't be as good, but if you want some, um, yeah, so I guess some good capital growth, it's really a gentrifying suburb. There's a lot of the Homes West uh, properties that are, are shifting out. So uh, the, the social, I guess, demographics of the area are really changing and improving. But then as you move up this way, these properties here, we start to get more dearer, like $600,000 plus. So that's out of our price range for this search. Then over east here, we've got the Gosnells Council area. Now, if you ask a local person, Gosnells generally is not seen as a very desirable area. Um, there is some suburbs that are more kind of desirable as a place to live. But the growth might be, I guess, stagnated a little bit by some of the reputation it has for people that live in Perth. So um, just be conscious if you're buying in this area, you get, you're going to get some cheap properties. You can buy a three or four bedroom for about 380000 thereabouts, depending on the quality of the property. And you get some good rental yields, but your growth might be uh, not as great as some of the areas that are closer into the beach and uh, in, in more desirable areas. But um, out of this area here, I've been looking a lot in Thornley. It's a really, I guess, family oriented suburb, lots of green open space. It's only 12 kilometers to the Perth city, which means that it's good for commuters who want to get into work. There is a train station there as well. But then if you go over towards this way, then there's a few suburbs through there, which just be conscious which streets you buy on because some areas may not be as desirable. Um, and also for rentability as well, you might have some issues with that there. As you're moving closer, Cannington hasn't had huge growth over recent years, which is really surprising because it is like in close proximity to the city. You've got a train station there as well. Um, there's also the new Westfield Carousel, which is over this way here. Um, beautiful shopping center. It's really uplifted the area. So that could change. We could see some good, uh, good growth there as more people find it uh, desirable given its affordability. The house prices there are lower we're talking i guess in the 500s to 600 mark but then as we move into victoria park victoria park is getting more and more popular we're starting to talk seven to nine hundred thousand for a house in there um there's a really some cool restaurant strips and uh yeah it's got a bit of a funky vibe so uh very popular in there as well we also have over this way a lot of people look at Belmont due to its close proximity to the airport. So there is some affordability in there. A lot of FIFO workers like to base themselves here so they can fly in and out and still have the city lifestyle with close proximity to Perth. And uh, yeah, you also got the, the Crown Casino here as well, which is a big draw card for the Perth region. Then over this way, they've actually built a new train line that goes uh, up from uh, Bayswater, which goes, um, there's a train station up around here. And then this suburb here, it's kind of, it's a little bit like a sleepy country town. It's got that kind of a vibe, uh, but with the new train station, there's probably going to be a lot of uh, development going on through there and more people seeing it as desirable, given you can jump on a train and in one stop, you can be at the airport. And there is, I guess, uh, forest field as well, which is also quite uh, um, affordable, but also good for families as well. But again, just be careful of the streets that you choose in some of these suburbs over this way. Then up north of Perth, we've got places that you can buy in that price range. So uh, 450 to 600. So places like Balladura, um, you can buy in Alexander Heights and also Marangaroo, which is quite popular 
as well. There is some suburbs which have a little bit of a stigma. So if you're looking at Balga, that's kind of known as the don't go there kind of suburb. Um, it, it is actually, it is improving. Unfortunately, the growth hasn't been there in the past and you might find that continues in the future. So while there is really affordable properties there, it does have a bit of a stigma. So if you want to um, ensure you get capital growth, then just be mindful of that. Then over this way as well, you got some of the suburbs, uh, Beach Bro, they've got a new train that's going in through here, which is going to be really helpful for commuters wanting to get into the city. That might actually have a really positive impact on the house prices through this area. Generally, the houses are a little bit older. Um, there can be some social issues in some areas through there as well. So just be conscious of that. Um, but there is potential. The fact that it is close to the city, close to the airport, and there's a new train going in as well. So they're kind of the suburbs that you can buy in that price range. Of course, if you go all the way up north, um, Alcamos, Queens Rocks, Clarkson, you can also pick up some properties in that price range. But just noting it is quite far from the city. There is a lot of development going on up there. So just be conscious that there's going to be more land coming up, more properties, more competition, so more supply, which means that your house prices might be stagged stagnant for a while. So just be conscious of that. But this is a really, really I guess, a quick overview of uh, all the, the different areas that people are buying. If you were to ask me, would I buy in one particular suburb? The answer is not really. There's 350 suburbs in Perth. So some of those suburbs that I've highlighted are definitely worth taking a look at and really finding uh, the property that suits your needs. As I said, you want a property that is going to meet your yield expectations and your growth expectation. Well, hopefully that's been helpful and it's helped you understand Perth and some of the markets you could buy in. But if you do feel a little bit overwhelmed, because I know there's a lot of data out there, there's a lot of things to consider. And people that come to me often say they want to avoid making a costly mistake because the nature of property, when you're putting that amount of money into something, you can lose out. So if you're thinking that you might want to have a chat with me and see if I might be able to help, then please book into a free consultation for 15 minutes. You can head to stevewilliams.com. So thanks again for joining me and remember to like, subscribe and follow. And any questions, please pop them into the comments below. I love to hear from you. Uh, I wanna continue providing you with all of this information so you can build your knowledge, your mindset and your motivation. So until next time, I'm Steve Williams, your licensed buyer's agent and property personal trainer. Wishing you all the very best in your property investing journey. See you next time.